Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Um, for more information, go to bookmap.com. There is a free trial. comes with education. Okay, you get it for 14 days. Uh, you also get the uh, access to the Bookmap educational course. Uh, and then access to the live uh, advanced order flow webinars. Uh, they're at 11 a.m., so immediately following this webinar. And uh, we cover and support the material uh, that is in the educational course. So you can read about it or uh, follow the videos here uh, in the educational course, and then you can um, uh, see it in the live markets uh, and then how Bookmap uh, uh, works with the uh, with the education. Okay, there's other resources resources as well, and you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, here's the website. Uh, just a, a quick review here. Scroll down. There's an intro video, information about Bookmap. Uh, Bookmap for equities. I'll go over this in just a minute. It's a great data feed though for uh, Nasdaq Total View. It's it's all U.S. equities, but you can read about the advantages here. Okay, and a bit further down, uh, connectivity. Okay, so uh, we are a financial trading platform, uh, just like you see others here in this list, like Ninja Trader, TTX Trader Pro, and Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation. Okay, we also connect via the API of these three platforms. Uh, but we are a platform just as they are. So you can connect Bookmap directly through your data provider or broker like CQG, Rhythmic, Gain Capital, S5 Trading, uh, IQ Feed, Transact Data, uh, and then Dev Experts. So this is the connection for U.S. equities uh, with that NASDAQ total view. All right. Okay. Uh, a bit further down, the pricing information. So uh, you get that 14-day trial period with Bookmap. Uh, there are a few different versions here, Bookmap Basic, Advanced, and Quant. 49 per month for Bookmap Basic, 99 for Advanced. It's really one version. To be honest, it's Bookmap Basic. The differences between these two are the add-ons. Okay, So the ability to trade right from the chart here. Uh, that's the one-click trading, as well as the large lot tracker, which uh, spots larger players holding the majority of liquidity at specific price levels. So not only are we um, showing uh, order flow, uh, but we're showing larger players as well. So we're starting to get deeper into the order flow. Uh, volume and balance and order book and balance, uh, again, another um, uh, Indicator here, proprietary indicator that we put together. All, all of these are proprietary indicators. Uh, the iceberg detector, though, will spot larger players that are using uh, hidden orders uh, instead of showing it in the limit order book. All right. So, uh, again, looking for those larger players. Uh, and then there's a correlation tracker, so you can uh, have a multiple markets and see how they're all correlating together. Uh, quants, uh, you will have specific needs. Okay, this is uh, really a, a more customized version. Uh, it's not, I mean, most quants that we work with, they have, they'll have very specific needs uh, and they want book maps visualization, but they're looking for specific needs to be met, like connecting their data or their own proprietary indicators, et cetera. So we can work with you. You can learn more here and reach out to us uh, and, um, uh, you know, for their uh, their quant needs. Okay, a little bit further down. So there is a, a link here for uh, free data for two weeks. Uh, many of the data providers offer. Uh, so they give a free trial for 14 days, and you can get Bookmap for 14 days. So if you're new to futures here, uh, that's where to go. Uh, get your data, uh, try Bookmap, and uh, and see if it's uh, something that uh, works for you. Uh, I can't decide which plan you want. You can click here for the features and comparisons. All right. Uh, social media. Follow us on uh, Twitter at bookmap underscore pro. And then uh, on uh, our YouTube website, okay, there's all sorts of videos here. And you can see the playlists uh, that are uh, listed on the front page. 
Um, rec I would recommend looking at some of the intro videos, then look at some of the features and components videos, uh, and then follow up here. This is where, um, you know, we go through this kind of data here, these order flow video snippets in detail in the live markets during the advanced order flow webinars. So this is order flow phenomena. Uh, and um, uh, these are, are concise videos that go through it and identify it. I think you'll find them very helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, you want to give Bookmap a try and then uh, attend those webinars and you can see uh, we go through this kind of stuff all the time. All right. Okay. Uh, that's that. And uh, let's uh, let's take a look at Bookmap and what's going on here. All right. We'll take a look at the NAS. Oh, this is oil. Okay. Let's take a look at that NASDAQ. Okay. All-time highs yesterday. Uh, just off to a tear. Whoops, that's the ES. Here we go. Okay, so um, let's just take a quick look at um, uh, the uh, the chart here uh, and what Bookmap is displaying. All right. So it's um, just go through the basics. Uh, there's three elements on this chart, and that's it. So it's not complex. Uh, it looks like it's complex. Uh, but uh, you'll, you'll see uh, what I mean as I go through this here. Three elements here on this chart are historical, best bid and offer. There, there is no aggregation whatsoever. Uh, it's just historical, best bid and offer. Uh, and then you see these volume dots. Okay? It's volume that traded on that historical, best bid and offer. Uh, and then you see the third element here is the heat map, Okay, this colored heat map here. Uh, what the heat map is showing you uh, is traders uh, that are uh, lined up in the book, okay? So these are these are traders here um, that uh, want to be uh, sellers at these levels, and down below price is where they want to be buyers, okay? So we usually look at that information here in the limit order book, right, in the dome, your depth of market. Uh, the problem with the dome here is that you see these numbers changing constantly. Well, there's no recording of it, okay? We record it. We record it with the graphics here, and then we plot it onto the chart historically. So now you can see the behavior uh, and understanding of these players uh, and their intent to trade at these levels, okay, in the auction. And that's the unique prospect here uh, in Bookmap. Okay, so let's um, uh, let's uh, take a look here, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll demo those three elements here um, and the insight and clarity you're going to get using Bookmap, uh, just with some such simple um, visualization techniques here. Okay, and uh, we'll do that by showing the candlestick chart. Okay, and I'm going to take everything else off the chart. All right, so here's a candlestick chart. Okay, five-minute candlestick chart. Okay, we're all very accustomed to candles. Uh, reading the bodies, the wicks, understanding buying pressure, selling pressure, etc. Problem with the candlestick chart is that there is just a lack of transparency. Okay, it's aggregated data within a five-minute period, and uh, and that's a problem uh, because there's all sorts of uh, detail uh, within these periods that we don't see because it's aggregated. So we can uh, very simply turn on the historical best bid and offer, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so for example, uh, just right off the bat, uh, nice nice little move here uh, to the upside, uh, and uh, look at the little the retest back to where we broke from. Okay, this candle here looks like it's getting kind of bearish. Uh, you know, you're seeing selling pressure uh, come in. You're seeing a wick on the top here, and the you know uh, some sellers come down. They didn't break down below the low here uh, from the previous five minute period. Okay, but uh, uh, you know sellers are coming in. Well. It, it, all, all this is, is a pullback uh, to where we broke from here. So we're looking at all sorts of microstructure uh, that we can see within the chart, okay? Same concept, uh, let me, let me uh, uh, demo it here, okay? Same concept is repeated again and again, okay? Here's a structural level, okay? Note how we broke above it here, and we traded up in a new structure here, and again, here, and then we can see a little break here as well. But uh, bigger picture uh, would be uh, this this uh, uh, break here. Okay, 
So now, now you can start to see these structures. Okay, that's lacking here in that in that uh, candlestick chart. You just don't see that, All right? So um, uh, that's uh, uh, very very easily to uh, or easy to display that uh, just with historical best bid and offer. So we're understanding microstructural levels, uh, and uh, and that's the first step in uh, improved visualization because it's not aggregated data. Okay, now let's turn on the volume. And okay, where is the volume? Here it is. Okay, so these dots here, uh, they're transactions that took place on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, we just bring down the size a little bit. Uh, and that's it. That's all we're showing. But we're showing very precisely the volume here. And uh, candlestick charts don't show that whatsoever. Okay, they're, you don't you don't understand where the volume took place within the, any any period whatsoever here. They usually have volume in a, in a sub chart down here, but it it completely lacks transparency because you can't see uh, where that volume traded precisely. Uh, you don't know what type it was. Was it aggressive buying or selling? Uh, you don't know about the microstructures and where it took place within those structures, uh, and um, uh, you, you don't know, uh, yeah, just when, uh, where, and how much, and what type. Okay, so now we only have two level, two uh, uh, elements here uh, on this chart so far uh, that I covered from the beginning. Okay, we're just looking at that historical best bid and offer and the volume. So let me zoom into an area here, this little pull back here, uh, and um, let's look at that. Okay, well. It's going a little bit further here. Let's go in here. Okay, this is it. Just those two elements. Uh, best offer, red line. Best bid is the green line. Okay. Now you can see these dots here, right? Uh, these dots are transactions. Okay. These are these are um, uh, trades that took place. Okay. A green dot uh, is an aggressive market buy. Okay. It's a, it's a um, someone crossed the spread. They they uh, they paid up. Uh, and they took liquidity off of the best offer. Okay, they didn't provide liquidity, they took it. Uh, that's what you get when you uh, uh, trade with a uh, uh, market buy and sell order. Uh, you, uh, you pay up for it, but you, you're not providing liquidity. Okay, you, you're taking it. Uh, you're not waiting, uh, you just want in. So you can see the uh, red dot is an aggressive seller. And that's, that's all we're plotting here. Okay, now the insights that you can get from this are tremendous though. Okay, because we can see microstructures and how the volume is, is behaving within these areas. Uh, that's something that is lacking in a footprint chart. Okay, you're not you're not able to zoom in like this. Okay, now we're just this is these are seconds here we're looking at between each vertical dotted line. Let's just zoom into this area here in this cluster in, of uh, of trading, right? And uh, I'll show you exactly what's going on here. Okay, note how we zoom in here and I pull apart that. Um, a big cluster, okay, of a uh, of volume, and uh, now we're down at microsecond level. We can continue to zoom in here, and we can look at nanosecond level here. Okay, look at the timeline. We're looking at billions of seconds here. All right, uh, and let me zoom out, and I'll just show you what a blink of an eye looks like here. Okay, it's just this is how fast these markets trade, which is just, it's just crazy. Um, so uh, let me get this uh, lined up correctly. Is that right? So I'm, I'm looking for 200 milliseconds uh, is an average blink of an eye. Now we're still not there. Okay. I'm going to go 600 to 800. Almost there. Getting there. Okay, so from here actually over to here is a, is the average blink of a human eye, All right? 10, 24, 27, 600 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds. Okay, all of this took place within within uh, uh, about a quarter of a blink of an eye, or a third of a blink of an eye. Okay, and that we're <laughs> we're able to show you every single market event. How it really unfolded. Okay, now for uh, for those of you who are quants or you're trading uh, algorithmically, uh, this is uh, it's amazing to see. Okay, 
uh, you, you can uh, really see uh, and uh, optimize uh, your automated strategies. Okay, you can also use this for uh, for replay mode to see exactly where uh, you you traded. Now, uh, most of us don't trade off of those levels. So this data and showing every single event, like who cares? What what good is it? Well, uh, what we're able to do here as we zoom back out, note how we're just aggregating visually. Okay, or graphically, uh, putting this all into a composite in a bigger red dot. Okay, so uh, uh, that's what you get when you when you zoom out. And um, uh, I, I just want to show that again because if I use this data tip tool, okay, I can show you exactly what traded here. Okay, this was a one lot. Uh, I get the date, the time, what was on the bid here at this price level, and then the volume. Uh, this was one lot at. Uh, uh, 6735 okay this was another one lot trade okay this one's a little bit bigger right this is for three all right so uh, that's what we're displaying now as I zoom back out and put this all together in a bigger dot and I hover over that note how it, it uh, uh, has uh, graphically consolidated it and gives me volume of 15 on the overall and right? if I continue to zoom out Note how I compress all of that data together, and at some points, there's so, so many trades that took place that we have to display this as a pie display. Uh, so we can see that the overall delta and shape of the volume at this level over here was the majority of it was selling, no, no question. Okay, a little sliver of it was buying. So there was some buying within this uh, little cluster of, uh, of activity. Okay, so those are the two elements there uh, that we're displaying. Now, um, and we can gain a tremendous insight by uh, by understanding volume within microstructure. Okay, that alone is uh, is extremely valuable. But let's get into the third third element here uh, on the chart, and we can take the candlesticks off. Okay, that third element is the heat map. All right, so let's go back and uh, look at the dome here. Okay, so here we are trading along in the Nasdaq. And uh, this is all historical, historical best bid and offer and the volume it traded. To the right of this vertical white line here is the current market. This is your current best bid and offer, okay? This is your last traded volume, this number. And um, here's our price ladder. And then here's our dome, our depth of market, right? You can see the depth here on the offer, okay? And depth on the bid. These are traders lining up providing contracts, liquidity, with limit orders at these price levels. This is where they want to trade, and they're willing to wait and provide liquidity at these levels, okay? And um, uh, that's very insightful for us because we wanna understand like where where traders are lined up in the auction. We wanna, we wanna know that, that's good information, okay? It gives us insight to the, uh, 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 you know, who, who's, who might be in control here, uh, you know, buyers or sellers or, uh, where are they really interested in dealing? We want to know that information. The, um, the problem with this dome, though, is note how it updates so quickly and these numbers change. And uh, now, now what? Okay, do, do you have to you have to remember uh, there was high liquidity up here at uh, maybe 57, um, or did they pull? Did they add higher? Um, we don't know any of this data. Okay. What about the areas around it? Are they front running? Are they pulling the liquidity and adding it higher? It's a lot of information just on the offer uh, to understand. And that problem uh, is, uh, is alleviated here because we record that data. Okay. So areas of high liquidity. Okay. We saw the areas right, right around here. Okay. Well, here's high liquidity at 57 and a half, for example. Right? And we can use that data tip tool again and show you exact numbers. And if I hover over these areas, note the date, the time, and then liquidity. It was 49 contracts here. And then the heat map got brighter and changed color. Okay, And uh, it went from 49 to 67. And then it got even, uh, well, you can see the, the scale here. It goes from uh, dark gray uh, to blue to white to yellow to orange. Right. The orange here is 84 contracts. So this is the brightest or the most liquidity. But we can also start to understand that uh, the intent of these traders at these levels. And we, we just got our answer right now. Okay. Uh, we, we traded up through that area and these guys pulled their liquidity. 
they did not want to deal at this level. All right? Okay, so we can see that. Now look at this. Price goes away, they jump back in. Okay? So, uh, uh, and then they just pulled again. All right? So we can see that these guys really don't want to trade up here. Uh, and that gives us um, a, a lot of insight. Okay, very easily and graphically. We don't have to memorize the numbers. Uh, where where do they want to trade? Well, the target would be up up here at 60 now. Okay, on the on the offer, the higher liquidity. Okay, we can start to identify uh, all sorts of things here. Uh, we can see in individual actors and players. Uh, for example, in this area here, uh, very very clear uh, example. This would be hard to read in a dome. Okay, if I zoom into this area here. This is an algo, okay? And uh, look how it is, um, uh, has uh, liquidity here at, uh, at 56.75. They pull it and they add it. At the same moment that they, they, they pull it, they add it higher. Okay, and then they stay here for a little bit and they start pulling and then they add it higher again and higher yet again, okay? So we can start to read their behavior. Okay. That's the kind of insight you can get just from simply recording uh, the auction. And uh, now we can use the dome and limit order book on much higher time frames. Okay, so we can zoom out. We don't have to look at the just current market any longer to, to gain an understanding of what's going on in that auction. We can zoom out and we can see the bigger picture. Okay. Now we can use the dome on much higher time frames. This is a, a phenomenon called flip of the book uh, here. Uh, you can see that there's high liquidity at this uh, 50, 55 level here. Okay, And then they flipped. As soon as price broke out of this area, they flipped, and now they're on the bid. They were on the offer. They are on the bid now. They want to be buyers here at this 55 level. Okay. Uh, and uh, so what does that mean? Well, it's kind of what we covered earlier about these microstructures and putting together an understanding of the microstructure, the aggressive volume here, a lot of buying, pulling price up, and then an, an aggressive um, auction as well. You know, they, they want to be buyers down at 55 or up at 55, I should say. Okay. So uh, go, going back to those structural elements, we can very clearly see it. Here to here, supported by the volume with the volume dots. Okay, let's so let's clear it here. But uh, so you can see the volume dots. So you can see the aggressive uh, buys pulling the price up. So buyers are engaged here. This is bullish, right? Target is 60. That's where they are. Uh, and um, uh, the um, uh, uh, and then you can see that uh, the, in the book here they're they're bullish too. They want to be buyers at these higher levels, All right? So now we're getting a complete picture, uh, not just of current market, but historical. And, uh, uh, you know, that can lead to all sorts of things. So if we come down to this area here, uh, we want to see first uh, if these guys are willing to stay in the book and trade, okay? Uh, this could be a, an opportunity to buy down at these levels here, okay? You wouldn't be able to know that or see that uh, without book map, okay? So we just traded into it. All right, and let's determine, you know, did, th did these guys trade, All right? Uh, let's just zoom in here, okay? And what was the liquidity at these levels, okay? So uh, 76 contracts, okay, 71. They start to trade into it, and they're starting to pull some. But overall, okay, we see that uh, uh, at 55 here, 71 contracts traded. Okay, we know that in our volume column. So that's fact. So a lot of this liquidity was... Uh, uh, some of it was pulled, but the majority of it traded. So these guys are, are now long in the market. Okay, they they, uh, uh, they they had the intent to trade. So we just made the distinction between um, fake liquidity uh, over here where they pulled, okay, they didn't want to trade, and li real liquidity where they did want to trade. Okay, so if you see that kind of activity, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, we always we always see a little bit, not always. Um, uh, many times it will go through a little bit longer, a little bit further, uh, and then they'll come on the other side and they'll um, uh, lift the offer with aggressive buying. Uh, and if you're bullish, well, uh, you just traded to the outside of the uh, range here, um, probably triggered a lot of stops. And uh, you can trade this back up into the mean, okay? 
and we might we might be seeing a shift in the order flow right now. Uh, but uh, you could have traded it back to the mean here, which would be your high volume node. Okay, or if you're still bullish, uh, you would you would hold it and look for the other side of the range and target the 60 area up here or 59 now. Okay, now why am I saying that this is uh, potentially um, uh, uh, bearish? Now we might see a flip. Okay, uh, and uh, the reason being is that we broke this microstructure. And we pulled right back to the bottom of the range here. Okay. And we didn't find buyers there. Okay. So uh, this is a, a pullback to where we broke from. And then it went down down lower now. So now are we going to see a shift? Are, is, is price going to now start to accept at lower lows? Okay. We want to know that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Edson. I see your your um, your question here from uh, quite a while ago. Um, oh yeah. I mean, uh, I've looked at the Brazilian markets as well, um, and um, uh, through that Cedro uh, connection, and um, it's it's great. Uh, it, it shows exactly exactly the same same data here. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Um, I think those markets, uh, you know, uh, I think Bookmap uh, displays a, a lot of really nice things in there. Um, I, you know, the clarity is pretty, pretty good. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, now, uh, you know, reading, this could be a potential reversal here. Okay. Uh, but one of the, there's a few things we look for in, in that uh, reversal. Okay. And it's a little muddled on this, in this example here, but we want to see the aggressive selling here. And we do see uh, a lot of red, okay, a lot of aggressive selling, pulling the market lower. So we're probably going to come down now and test this 52 area, okay. Um, uh, we, we'll see. Uh, but um, the um, uh, it's a little muddled here because there's a nice cluster of buying up here. So uh, in in um, reading the order flow like this. Um, this is, it, it's showing, it, it's not showing the, uh, it's telling you, it's giving us clarity. Uh, it's telling you that uh, uh, there is something here. Uh, there is nothing here as, in terms of opportunity because um, uh, we see uh, aggressive buying up here and aggressive selling down here. So we're looking for sideways action. Okay. So you could, I mean, take take that forward and uh, look for, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe buying the, um, uh, some of the lows down in these areas, trade it back up, and then uh, some of the uh, highs up here, uh, short it and trade it right back down. Okay, so you can you can go from trending market to range bound market, uh, or if you're bearish and you think this is a high level that I don't know fits your fib levels or whatever, and you want to start layering into the market, you can also do that as well. All right. Anyway, yeah, anyway, guys, let's uh, let's wrap it up. I've got to jump to the next webinar. Um, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll take it from there, okay. Okay, everyone have a good weekend, and uh, we'll catch up with you. Okay, so Monday is a is a holiday, all right. So uh, there is no webinar on Monday, uh, but we'll see you on Tuesday, okay. All right, thanks guys. Take care.